Hey guys, Julie Rocks here, and in this video, I have a really special unboxing. I'm super excited about this. So I ordered this product yesterday from Amazon, and it came um, just today. So a one-day prime shipping, which is amazing. And yeah, I've been looking forward to this for the past 24 hours, so let's dive in. Uh, what I have here is a Wanderings watercolor journal. Actually, it's just advertised as a regular journal, but it's 100% cotton paper, 90 pounds. So yeah, I could use it for watercolors and that's what I'm planning to do. Uh, so it comes with this little card here. It's pretty cute. It says, and so the adventure begins. And on the back, let me read this out to you here says thank you for choosing wanderings i hope you love your purchase please let me know if you're not completely satisfied i want to make this perfect for you your purchase also comes with a 365 day warranty in the unlikely event your wanderings product does not stand the test of time please register online now at and then there's the website there so yeah it's pretty cool i'm excited uh, you know what, I'm going to put this camera on the stand here just so I have some free hands. Oh, I think this, I, I think it could, I don't know, what, does it matter? I'm pretty sure it's this way though. <laughs> Anyways. This is it here, and uh, these are 200 sheets. And this, the special thing about this journal is that it's handmade. So yeah, that's pretty incredible. And I paid thirty dollars Canadian for it, for a handmade product with a hundred sheets or 200 pages, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, a hundred percent cotton. Like that's such a huge bargain. And I've been looking into uh, watercolor journals for a while and I was really keen on getting 100% cotton uh, watercolor paper. Uh, so you Americans have many options on Amazon. Us Canadians, not so many. And there aren't many bargains too for 100% cotton paper. Uh, so the fact that this comes with so many sheets, it's 100% cotton and it's handmade for 30 Canadian, like that's such a huge steal. Uh, but I will check, I'm pretty sure these are available on the American Amazon, uh, I'll add a link down below. But uh, anyways, these sheets here um, are 90 pounds, they're not as thick as some of the watercolor paper that I've worked with in the past. Uh, but the fact that they're 100% cotton, you know, I think that makes up for it. I have noticed when flipping through it, some pages are slightly thicker than others, but since it's handmade paper, it's hard to get everything um, the exact same size. So yeah, so that's fine. I mean, it's no big deal. So this paper is stitched on. This is the binding here. There are five bundles of 20, I'm assuming, since there are 100 pages in total, and they're stitched on just like that. Um, overall, in terms of durability, uh, I feel like it'll be pretty solid, especially if there's a one-year satisfaction guarantee, like if this thing falls apart, um, I guess I could just uh, put in a request for a new one. I'm not quite sure how it works. But the fact that um, this company is willing to stand by their product is pretty neat. I'll dig into the warranty just so I can give you guys more details about it. But for the most part, uh, I don't think it will be an issue. Anywho, uh, I'm really excited to dive in. I haven't worked with uh, too much 100% cotton watercolor paper, so I'm not an expert in the field, but uh, I'll paint something and you guys will be able to see uh, for yourselves how watercolors react on this kind of paper. And I might also test it out with some gouache and some uh, different kinds of mediums. For the most part, I am very excited to um, dive into the sketchbook. I probably won't paint anything today, but maybe within the next couple of days. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So thanks for watching this portion and I will see you guys in a bit.
Okay guys, I actually had so much fun painting this. Uh, I don't usually paint things that are messy and when I do they never turn out nice, but I really like this. It was a lot of fun and the experience using the paper was pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you could see on camera, but the paper has this sort of texture here and you could see it better when you paint over it. And you can almost feel that underneath your paintbrush, so it's really interesting. And I think this kind of paper is best suited for the more um, messy experimentation type pieces. And what I was surprised about, because it isn't super thick paper, I think it's 90 pounds, uh, but nothing bled through, which is crazy, because yeah, it just... I don't know, I, I guess I was expecting some, something to bleed through a little bit. Uh, another thing is, there's very limited buckling, which actually surprised me. Like I know it's 100% cotton, but just because of how it's thinner than the standard 100% cotton paper that I work with, uh, I expected buckling, but you know, it's like this is pretty good. Uh, the only thing I noticed is that when I painted on this paper with my Mei Liang watercolors, uh, the colors turned out a little bit more dull than they normally do. So here, I, let me show you. I, I took a bit of a swash and you could see just because it is handmade paper, there's going to be some consistencies. Like I think that's inevitable. So you can see like as it was drying, some of the water pooled. In certain areas some of them have no pooling at all but yeah that's just what you're gonna get so um, this here this was something I painted a while back I didn't really like how it turned out I think I overworked it and just didn't like my color choices so I'm using this paper uh, just to do a swatch test this is my arches cold press watercolor paper and uh, let's see here if you could see on camera yeah you could kind of tell on camera First off, there was no pooling in these swatches here, which is expected. And you can see uh, that the colors here are just a lot brighter than they are here. So like, compare these two. Look at that. These two blues here. Even these ones, like the blues. The greens look kind of similar. Um, this one is a little bit brighter. These greens here look fairly similar, minus these. So these these two greens here look fairly similar. Um, this one is actually darker here. Maybe it depends um, what kind of pigment it is. And then I tested out some of the red. So I picked um, some of the brightest colors in my palette. 
The reds actually look pretty well matched here. So it looks like it's certain pigments that take better on the arches paper versus this one here. And I'm not sure if there's a science behind it. Maybe it was a user error on my part, but hey, um, yeah, just something to, to keep in mind. So I'm not quite finished yet. I really want to test the limits of this paper. So I'm going to do one more uh, painting or illustration. Uh, we'll see. I'm still thinking about it. I might do another watercolor piece and I might use um, more water than I did with this one. Or I might actually draw my typical uh, character illustration just to see, you know what, I think that would be better just for the sake of this demo, uh, just so you could see what the paper looks like when you actually try to draw a more clean finished piece. So I'm gonna uh, just sketch a character and then I'll ink it and I'll go in with the watercolor as I usually do. <laughs> Okay guys, so I was testing out graphite and um, I erased some of the, oops, I erased some of the pencil mark and it completely ate away at the paper here, which is just crazy. Like, ooh, that's nuts. So this is definitely not for sketching, it's not for erasing, it's great for ink and for watercolor but if you're mostly interested in graphite sketching and you tend to erase a lot this is not the sketchbook for you So there's like a weird fiber here and I'm not sure if it's from my brush or from the paper but I'm pretty sure it's from the paper and I can't get it off and I don't want to mess with the paper too much because I'm scared that something like this might happen but like you know what no this is a demo so we have to test the paper's capabilities uh, let's see here I don't know if you can oh gosh Come on tripod, work with me. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like messing with my art piece. No, I can't get it off. It's like after I applied water to it, it like got stuck on the page. Okay, I guess as long as it doesn't come loose again, we'll be okay. But yeah, that's a little weird. <laughs> but I think that's just one of those handmade paper things. This is actually my first time working with handmade paper, so uh, in the comments below, if you've ever worked with handmade paper, then just let let me know if this is a normal thing, because I'm really curious. What exactly is the verdict here? Uh, first off, I want to say overall, I'm really enjoying this sketchbook. 
<laughs> I mean, technically it's not advertised as a sketchbook, it's advertised as um, just a handmade journal, but I kind of love it. I think it's a great experience. This thing is really weird. Like definitely do not erase this paper. And that weird fiber thing, that was strange too. But aside from that, I kind of love how you can feel the texture of the paper underneath your brush. And I feel like even with the rough watercolor paper, like this rough arches paper here, like you can see the texture as well, but maybe because it's so even, you can't really feel it. So I really enjoyed that about this, but if you prefer um, painting on something that's uh, more smooth, then this might not be the sketchbook for you or you might want to use it as something to, I mean, to create things where, again, you experiment rather than uh, working on some neat and clean pieces. I know a sketchbook in general is meant for experimentation, but everyone approaches a sketchbook differently. Some people prefer creating things that are a little more clean, and that's totally fair. So in terms of this here, I, I mean, I think the sketchbook is perfect for this kind of work. I would never really approach it. Um, like, I would never think to approach it with a character drawing, but I really like how this turned out. Like, I really enjoy it. And again, it's not like one of my... Here, let me show you. Uh, it's not like one of my super clean sketches like this where I really put em emphasis on the line work, but... While working with this paper, I mean, I wanted to create something that was a little more rugged. And that's a really cool thing about trying different mediums and trying different sketchbooks. It's that they inspire different styles of art. Like, I would never try this either, but just looking at the paper and looking at the edges, I needed to create something like fun and messy. So it's kind of cool how this sketchbook inspired two illustrations that are completely out of my comfort zone. And considering that alone, like, I think this sketchbook will inspire so many interesting pieces and I'm really excited about that. So one really neat thing I noticed when I was painting both of these is that the colors absorbed into the page quite quickly. Uh, so I, I painted these first and I did it rather quickly, then I went to this side and then when I went back here with the shadows, I was expecting it to bleed and blend together. I wanted to create that effect, but you could see like a hard line here. So the water just absorbs really quickly. So when you're trying to do this kind of effect, you sort of have to do it right away. Like here, I didn't, I barely waited <laughs> after putting in the darker green and you have that beautiful bleed. But yeah, something like this really depends on what kind of style you're going for or what kind of technique you're trying to play with. That effect actually worked pretty well with this piece here. I am very impatient, <laughs> just in general. So I don't know why I choose watercolor as my go-to medium, but I'm just super impatient. I hate waiting for paint to dry. In between takes, I actually went down here onto my floor and grabbed my heat gun because it just doesn't stretch far enough. Like it just goes right up to here. So I didn't film those parts, but like I would use my heat gun just so this could dry. So I tend to make a lot of mistakes with watercolors just because I don't wait for each layer to dry. I just like to dive in. And the fact that this dries so quickly, like yes, I use my heat gun, but either way, when you're working with watercolors, like you're still gonna have to wait for it to dry no matter how absorbent the paper you're working with is. Uh, but the fact that like I was able to paint this right away and then I went in and painted right next to it and there's like minimal bleeding. Like there's a bit of bleeding here. This was uh, some of the shadows that I added and there's like a little bit of bleeding there but I, I went right next to the green with this blue color and I was kind of amazed that it didn't just bloom right into the other color. Uh, Cause yeah, that's something that I run into quite often. So it's pretty cool that wherever you place the colors down, for the most part, they're gonna stay there. They're not gonna move much. Uh, another thing I noticed with this page is that no matter how much water I put on it, 
and I put quite a few layers and I didn't even wait that long between layers. Like sometimes I was using my heat gun, other times I just waited for it to dry. The thing is, Every time I added a new layer, I didn't notice anything different in terms of the integrity of the paper. It felt like I was just painting on a regular blank spot, which is pretty interesting because all the other paper I work with, like once you paint one layer, the second layer, it feels different and you can tell that you painted onto it before. But I didn't really experience that with this paper and that might have been just the texture of the paper that was doing that or I don't know, the paper itself, but I found that really cool. Overall, I'm already in love with this sketchbook I or this watercolor journal. I just, oh, I think it's amazing and I think it's gonna inspire so much cool artwork. And oh, I don't know, I just love it. Like I, I love this piece, I love this piece as well and I can't wait to just dive in with more pieces. I haven't been this inspired to paint by an art supply in so long and I think you could tell just by, by my voice, I'm like giddy right now, I'm really excited about this. Uh, I love that it's handmade, I love the way it looks, I love that it was affordable and I just love the experience of it. So this might not be the watercolor book for everyone, but I, I love it. And you know, take from this review what you will. <laughs> I hope that if you end up getting the sketchbook, you experience the same thing because I had so much fun with these two pieces and I just can't wait to dive back in. Anyways, that was my review. I hope you enjoyed it and I guess if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you want me to try out other mediums, other techniques, let me know and I could test it out for you and maybe add something in the description with the results. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. And this is all I got. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Julie Rocks, signing out. Peace.